Yeah, okay. It works. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jaromir Vasiluk. I come from Warsaw, Poland. Uh, the topic of my talk today is how glaucoma lasers are different from each other. So let me present this short introduction to next coming lectures today. Uh, this is my financial disclosure. And there's uh, quite few of lasers today on the market, and many of them were brought lately, last year, to the market. And uh, we observe generally very fast development in retinal diseases and glaucoma, uh, and the last is my field of interest. So what are these little differences? First, the wavelength, of course, and the source of laser beam, but for us doctors, it's not most important, maybe. More important is affected tissue. It may be iris, ciliary body, trabecular meshwork, or sclera. The other thing is uh, the type of procedure. It may be non-invasive, we can perform it in outpatient clinic, or it may need some other effort like operation room or surgical access in other cases. Another thing, important thing, is uh, effect on the tissue. It may be thermal coagulation or no tissue destruction, so you can repeat this kind of procedure several times. Uh, we can look at the lasers at their place in glaucoma algorithm uh, therapy. Um, I mean, the first line therapy, they may be second choice, and sometimes they are reserved for last resort procedures. So, uh, briefly about uh, first part, this is uh, lasers effective on iris. Uh, in this group, we have our good old iridotomy and iridoplasty. The other group is lasers effective on sclera, uh, where they can help us in making NPDS, non-penetrating deep sclerectomy or trabeculectomy. It's not very widely used, but they are excimer, erbium, or CO2 lasers. But today, uh, we are going to focus on the other two tissues, uh, trabecular meshwork and ciliary body. In this group, we have uh, all traditional ALT, argon laser trabeculoplasty, and some newer methods which came up last year is PLT and uh, titanium sapphire laser trabeculoplasty. But most common today are MLT, which is subliminal laser trabeculoplasty, and SLT, selective laser trabeculoplasty. And the other tissue which is of our interest today is silvery body. This procedure you can perform during uh, endoscopic access, during operation like ECP, endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation, or in outpatient clinic like TSCPC, which is a well-known method, transclear diode laser, or newer one, uh, which will be more about uh, today, it's subcyclo TSCPC, which is subliminal treatment. Uh, Trabeculopathy, or indeed, uh, has evolved uh, greatly during last decades. Over the last decades, the story began in. Uh, late 70s when Weiss and Witter came up with uh, ALT, then came Professor Latina with revolutionary SLT with approval in 2001, and there uh, then newer methods were invented like uh, MLT and PLT. So there is quite a lot of them and there are differences, as I said before, uh, there are different types of lasers used and different uh, wavelengths they produce. ALT is argon mostly, PLT and MLT, these are diode lasers, and SLT we use second harmonic wave, co-switched uh, and DIAC laser. So in this table there is a summary of um, key differences between uh, these methods I talk, I'm talking about. It's LT, the main the major difference is that uh, there is a thermal photocoagulation, so destruction of tissue. In PLT and MLT there is effect of selective photocoagulation, while in SLT case, there is subcellular effect. It's thermalizes and cellular stimulation. We have different size of spots, of course. The biggest spots you can see it's in SLT. But also the energy is very small in this case, comparing to, for example, to, to ALT. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, inflammation. Uh, it's rarely observed in PLT and no inflammation uh, in MLT and SLT. You have some inflammation, of course, in argon. Uh, and repeatability. In the uh, case of ALT and PLT, you cannot repeat procedures. Uh, while in MLT, we don't really know because there is not enough data published about uh, uh, repeatability of this, uh, this laser. But in SLT, 
we have some clinical data suggesting that uh, it's beneficial for patients to repeat this when the hypotensive effect fades away over years. But besides uh, spot size, energy, repeatability, very important issue is impact duration. Impact duration is directly responsible for heat accumulation zone, zoned around laser impact when this energy spreads to tissue. Uh, there is very small heat accumulation zone in case of SLT, which is very important for tissue. So it's only one micrometer because the impact is really, really short. It's 0 0.004 milliseconds. It's bigger in MLT, so the range of this heat effect is bigger. It's even bigger in PLT, it's five, uh, 50 micrometers. And in case of SLT, the collateral thermal effect is really huge and it spreads, and it covers all trabecular meshwork. Why it's so big? Because uh, ALT impact duration time is 25,000 times longer than in case of SLT. So, the wider the heating zone, the more severe and unwanted thermal effect affects surrounding tissue. This is the thing we don't want. So what makes SLT a safe and, and non-invasive procedure? It's a unique mechanism of action of these lasers. This mentions selective thermophotolysis of melanosomes in tropical meshwork. Melanosomes are cells uh, loaded with pigment grains staying inside trabeculum. Uh, it's very limited thermal diffusion, so there is no collateral destruction of tissue. You cannot even observe it in microscope, uh, in electron microscope images. So SLT also induces cytokine release and macrophages activation. Macrophages migrate into trabecular meshwork and clean up extracellular debris. The other effect is stimulation of cell division and increasing the trabecular meshwork and Schlem's canal porosity. We can call it rejuvenating effect for trabecular meshwork. And finally, all of the factors uh, uh, result in increase of tropical outfall and in hypo hypotensive effect. So where is the place to use, uh, uh, time and place to use SLT in our glaucoma patient? In the laser trabecular palsy chapter in terminolo terminology and guidelines for glaucoma, there is clearly said to consider it as an initial treatment for POAG and pigmentary glaucoma. So, as you can see, there is a, there is a place for it uh, published several years ago. So now quickly move to other tissue, to ciliary body. You are all familiar with the old traditional methods, uh, which is called TCPC, standing for transclerar cyclophotocoagulation. It's thermal method with destruction of tissue. So it was invented in early 70s. First it was performed with xenon and ruby lasers, then diode. It is still used and it's effective in alleviating pain in blind eye or in eye with poor vision or after surgical failures. It's effective, but it's burdened by plenty of side effects. And uh, you cannot repeat it, of course, because it's thermal destruction of tissue. Generally, it's last resort treatment. So on the slide, you have listed the incidence uh, of most common side effects of TCPC, I mean the thermal uh, traditional method, starting with pain and uveitis, which are very common through hypotony and permanent visual acuity decrease, ending sometimes, unfortunately, in even loss of the eye. But now we have uh, another uh, way to do uh, cyclophotocoagulation, it's so-called uh, subcyclo. It stands for subliminal transclural cyclophotocoagulation. So we have two technologies now inside one box. It's another way to do the same or not the same. There are big differences between these two methods. On the left-hand side, you can see the scheme of the subcyclo. There is a laser beam, which is fractionated in a small shot into small shots. Very, very short shots. And between these short shots, there are gaps. During these gaps, uh, tissue has enough time to cool down. It's so-called thermal relaxation time. So there is no heating of the tissue. There is no destruction. On the right-hand side, you can see thermal-based CPC when the delivery of energy is continuous and 100% of energy goes to tissue. And that's why the tissue warms up and there is coagulation. So what's really new in summary in subcycle to CPC? It's a new mechanism of action. It induces uveal sclerar across pathway by ciliary body remodeling and impairs, selectively impairs pigmented epithelium. 
there is no thermocoagulation, so you can repeat the procedure. Uh, there is no significant pain or inflammatory reaction, of course, some anesthesia, usually peribulbar is needed. And that's, of course, the broader spectrum of medications. No, it's not only last res result procedure. So another table when there is summary of uh, main differences, the major differences between the old uh, traditional TCPC and new subcyclo. The main difference, the uh, most important difference for us is uh, tissue effect the laser produces. In the first place, there is in the first place uh, TCPC makes thermal photocoagulation while subcyclo doesn't have such effect. Uh, so you can repeat the second method while the first it's not repeatable. So another EGS guidelines and therapeutical algorithm. So where is the place for uh, subcyclo in this algorithm? I think it, it can be here. It's considered laser as a second line therapy in refractory glaucomas, in advanced glaucomas, or like a third line last resort therapy, you can also use it here. And this is my scheme. I uh, produced it some time ago, but now new, pub new data are published every year. Last year in uh, March in Lancet, it was a very nice publication uh, in Lancet. There is uh, my friend Professor Garvey Heath from Mulch is here as a co-author, and this is a study called Light, and you will hear more about it in next talks, but I would like to mention the, let's say, key home message from the study, that selective laser trabeculoplasty should be offered as, as a first light treatment. So. Because of this new, fresh data, we should maybe rethink our everyday habits and modify a little bit our therapy, like this. So, summarizing this short introduction, we have plenty of different glaucomas and plenty of lasers to use. So, for POAG and ocular hypertension and some secondary glaucomas like pigmentary or pseudo-exfoliation, we have laser trabeculoplasties. As a second-line therapy, we have subcyclo TCPC. For angioclosure glaucoma, there is uh, still good, we have uh, iridotomy and iridoplasty, and you can use it sometimes, of course, for pigmentary glaucoma in uh, selected cases. And for uh, neovascular glaucoma and end-stage disease, we have thermal TCPC as a last less resort treatment. Finally, how to treat and what kind of laser should be used, of course, it's the doctor's decisions. It's your decision. Thank you very much.